Hi everyone and welcome to my re-review of Terence Malick's The Thin Red Line in 1998. Um, so yes, here we are uh, with a different review. Um, I don't believe I've ever done a, a kind of re-review and um, I will be doing the same with The Tree of Life um, pretty soon actually. Um, but yes, here we are with the Steelbook uh, once again a year later, um, pretty much exactly a year later. Um, to the first time I watched this, um, you know, reviewed on the channel, I'd already seen it before, you know, that review, so it's my third time, and um, yes, we are back with a Malik review, and, um, you know, this is something I wanted to do, uh, many YouTubers do it, you know, re-review films, um, you know, multiple reviews of the same film, um, I don't believe I'm going to delete my other one, um, but, but of course, yeah, this one is, it's kind of uh, adjusted ratings and stuff, and, uh, you know, my... My, my, my even more passionate thoughts on the film, um, for example, and uh, just things, you know, this will be a spoiler review this time round. I don't believe last time it was, and I've not really looked through that. I don't really look through my old reviews um, too much, but, but I, I guess some of the stuff I say in this will probably be, you know, uh, in similar vein uh, for what I said um, in my original review. But it will be more, you know, more things I'm talking about and uh, just overall, you know, even more uh, kind of dealings, you know, thoughts on Malik, um, actually. And uh, yes, you know, one of my top 15 directors of all time, uh, you know, and it's, 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 it's a director, a filmmaker who is just, you know, he, he's made very, very few films, um, you know, consider, you know, his first film was 73, you know, he's made very, very few films um, since then. Um, so it's, 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 he's a director who's, you know, like Stanley Kubrick, um, where he makes, you know, it takes a while, um, at least he did until The Tree of Life, as we know, he's kind of made quite a few in the last few years, and, you know, they've not, personally for me, been, you know, on the level, um, but... But, you know, I've not responded to him as much, uh, let's just say. Um, but I really appreciate, you know, he's, he's doing his own thing. And, um, you know, I am just so much looking forward to A Hidden Life as well. Uh, but yes, this film is his third feature film, uh, The 20-Year Gap. Um, really, really surprisingly, between this and Days of Heaven. Um, and he was, you know, Days of Heaven was a long time in the editing room. And uh, there was, you know, there's rumours, uh, never too much in the film. In the way of confirmation, you know, about what happened with that film in terms of going back without a lot of the crew I've heard um, and actually redoing um, quite a lot of the film there. So, yes, you know, it's, it's, it's you could say even more more than 20 years, you've really. Um, and, and this was released 1998, same year as Saving Private Ryan. Uh, we won't get to that, you know, I've done a review for that film. But yes, this film is a war film. Uh, and, and you look from Days of Heaven um, and Badlands and then. You go to this, and uh, it just really shows so, so wonderfully the range and uh, just the craft. How this guy is able to just, you know, uh, written and directed, of course, um, just make a film like this, uh, completely different um, in so many ways to his other works. And uh, after 20 years of not, you know, being involved really in this um, kind of thing, and making films, uh, and then he just makes one of the greatest masterpieces of all time, um, one, you know, among the best the finest, uh, most purest and moving war films and uh, just an epic, a epic film, a uh, wonderful tragedy, it's it's poetic, it's um, it's so brutal, um, you know, haunting film, uh, but wow, you know, this film has grown on me, um, you know, since, since last year and um, the first time I saw it, I was just blown away and it took a while to really process as well, a lot of the the more quieter moments, for example, and because uh, it's just you know a big, big, grand, uh, epic, you know, uh, explosive war film, um, and I was just shocked um, so much and, and moved by, by the you know the, the primal uh, you know feelings I got from the film, and of course the the massive epic score by Hans Zimmer, um, one of the best composers, of course, and uh, yeah, this will be a spoilers review. Um, so this, of course, will be a little bit different to my last one, my other review, of course. Um, I didn't get into maybe some of the specifics, uh, you know, of what happens. Um, but yeah, it's 1942 and um, South Pacific. Um, and of course, uh, Jim Caviezel um, and one of his, um, you know, his friends, um, you know, they kind of, they've gone off to this island, uh, AWOL, um, as, as we know. And yes, you know, you see them at the beginning of the film and um, just, just, you know, the first time I saw this, I thought, you know, from this opening act, um, it's really beautiful. Um, and it's, it's kind of, reeling you in, um, kind of thing, and, um, you know, but I thought the rest of the film was just leaps and bounds above it, and uh, in many ways it is, but, but actually, this first act even, um, I was crying, you know, I was brought to tears um, by, by how spiritual uh, this was, um, and how, you know, how heartfelt and human this was. This is, uh, this is really indescribable, actually, the emotions I feel just, uh, you know, Perfection. Um, I think that the whole film is just perfection, and um, it really is something else. The way it moves me, 
And, you know, it's this wonderful kind of calm before the storm uh, in many, many ways. And uh, Jim Caviezel was, of course, private wit, um, you know, and when, once you've seen the film um, a couple of times even, uh, it's it's something you go back to these kind of these quiet moments at the beginning and has such an effect. And uh, he's with this tribe and it's just, they're so moving these moments. The use of music, um, wow, it, it, it's something that is truly, truly wonderful. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that I just... You know, I'm just uh, uncontrollable with actually at times uh, the narration, um, especially throughout the film by Jim Caviezel. And actually later on, uh, we'll get to Sean Penn, who is, you know, just even better than I remembered in this film. Um, wow, he is just just brilliant. Um, absolutely stunning in this film. Um, but the narration, of course, it goes to different characters throughout the film, uh, getting in the minds of them. And um, just once again, though, the Jim Caviezel um, narration is something else. And uh, every line of narration, uh, it really just... Uh, at least, at the very least, um, uh, kind of uh, makes me think, um, you know, and actually makes me uh, reflect um, on life and uh, it just, you know, in some way relate to it. Um, and pretty much all of the narration is something that actually brings tears to my eyes. Um, it's beautiful, it really is. And um, it's, it's so in tune uh, with the mood of the film at particular points. And uh, just, just um, to really, really uh, say something about the characters. And the overall, uh, the nature of war, um, and, and nature as well, of course, um, once again, just taken aback by by how, you know, wonderful it is uh, in, in the way it portrays nature and the, the way, um, you know, these, these um, this army, you know, these, these soldiers, um, you know, men uh, disrupt um, the way of nature. And uh, it's a theme that, you know, um, is, of course, uh, very, very prevalent in, in Matic works. Um, Less so, of course, um, with, uh, you know, again, the latest is free, really. Um, they're more in the cities and everything. Um, to the wonder, not so much. Um, but, you know, it's more modern kind of uh, stuff going on there. And it's a bit different. Um, but but the first five, you could say, certainly, um, you know, the way of nature. Um, you know, and uh, the way that, of course, uh, that man is, you know, kind of disrupting this um, is, is prevalent in, in his works. And uh, certainly here, you know, the way that, the trees, for example, are captured um, and everything at the beginning uh, in such a serene way. And then, of course, you've got the the real tragedy uh, that is, is war. Um, the way it's depicted in the film, um, you know, once again, just completely, uh, it really is shocking. Um, the scenes, of course, um, you know, when the Japanese, you know, are, are taken over, um, you know, the, the line, the journey to the lion scene, which is just um, the standout scene, of course, uh, for me really uh the film emotionally and uh, just in terms of pure cinematics uh the visual storytelling throughout it is flawless um but this is something that just overwhelms the senses and uh the operatic nature of this and uh, just just how it's so you know it's epic of course it's it's you know comparable to apocalypse now um you've got the the uh the helicopter scenes of course the attack on the village uh and it's epic there's no denying it uh for everything but then at the same time, uh, this filmmaker, just like Coppola, is not um, saying that completely. He is, of course, uh, shown the complexities and the tragedy and, uh, you know, everything of war. The way the Japanese, you know, how they're kind of just beaten uh, on this particular uh, occasion in this particular battle. And, uh, they, you know, it's, it's so sad, um, you know, the way some of the people treat them as well. Um, it's just, again, shocking, um, you know, kind of. A couple of the characters, um, you know, in this uh, in this film, how they're kind of you know against uh, just so brutal to these, uh, you know, these other the other side, um, you know, and that's just showing how how war can sometimes be so inhumane and uh, leaving all reason behind. And yes, yeah, just just um, it's an epic scene, as I say, it's overwhelming, it's awe inspiring, but it's really really tragic and uh, just uh, disturbing actually, you know, as well. Um, just just really is something else, but it's so human. Uh, this entire film, um, it, all it's concerned with is humanity. And, um, you know, for, for the flaws and just for the for the beauty of it, um, you know, and how, you know, as well, I picked up on so much this time around, uh, you know, within the characters um, once again. And, uh, you know, Sean Penn's character, um, you know, Welsh. Um, and just the scene, the first scene on the boat, um, which the first time I saw it, I loved. But, but, but you know, these moments, I didn't quite... You know, I love them so much more now even. Um, and I already thought it was a masterpiece um, the first time I saw it. But Sean Penn, you know, and the way he has that conversation, uh, which is just, it really is something else. Um, it sets up the film wonderfully. And uh, the dynamics, of course, 
and maybe one of the the themes you know of the film uh, the messages you know of the film and uh, just when wit um you know jim caviezel is um is talking uh, talking to sean penn here and uh, we have that line um you know this conversation really saying you know um wit of course says he's more of a man um than, than, than uh, welsh will ever be but but then of course the line you know back the reaction um saying that, that in this world one man alone is nothing um and it's you know collective in in this way um in many regards and you can't, you know, essentially, you know, that won't make a difference, one man. Um, but then, you know, kind of in many weird, you know, ironic ways, um, later on in the film, um, you have Wit uh, risking his lives uh, for, for the rest of them. You know, it really is uh, when he risks his life there. Uh, to the ending of the film, of course, the tragedy of this um, really just speaks to me even more so now. And um, yes, of course, he, he dies at the end, as we know. Um, and uh, it's just... The way you know you think back to that moment, and uh, yes, you know he did, he did make a difference, um, and actually just, you know, really, um, just the tragic, uh, tragic moment, um, and you know, really it comes full circle. Um, you know, once it's happened, you look back to this moment on the boat, and um, just throughout the film, it really moves me um, how Jim Caviezel uh, is such a a masterful performance. Um, you know, it's it's wonderful, it really is a beautiful performance, um, just in his eyes. You see the conviction. Um, you see the uh, how haunted it is at times, uh, but then at the same time, he's so kind of at peace uh, in many regards um, compared to so many of the other characters in the film. And it's almost as if he knew that he was, you know, going to be doing this at the end and sacrificing himself for the rest of the men. And um, you know, it, it's something that is truly, truly moving. And uh, yes, the acting in this film throughout, um, you know, it is truly, truly stunning. And um, you know. It's just, it's an all-out, you know, um, epic poem, and uh, you know, it's just, it's cinematic perfection in my eyes. Um, it really has grown on me even more. It's my third viewing, as I say, and uh, while it's not, you know, I, I think there are three manic films uh, personally that are better than this, and uh, I cannot wait to read, you know, talk again about my my, my tree of life experience, um, you know, on the next uh, review of that, and um, that will be, of course, um, yes full marks review there you know as i've said before you know that one's that certainly is um extremely high on my list now and uh, so is this um it really is a, a real a real um high spot in my top 200 uh, it certainly is it's not in my top 100 um but it is it's certainly um you know gone up a tier um we'll get to that soon but yes this one is just um it's so moving it's so wonderfully acted um and i think it shows the brutality of war um and the way it's just the first couple of deaths as well, I picked up on this uh, once again, but it was more so this time. Um, you know, you see these men um, on the boats and everything. It wonderfully builds these up, you know, all these characters, and it's a big, big cast, as I've said before. So many actors, John Travolta even, um, keep forgetting he's in the film, and then he shows up and it's, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, of course. And, um, you know, so many uh, actors in the film, um, Adrian Brody, who famously wasn't, wasn't um, you know, given too much of a role in this although he believed he was going to be and so he was cut essentially but i do i do think that was the right thing to do um, on this occasion because melding the film around um jim caviezel's character in his performance actually was uh you know a stroke of genius in my eyes um certainly the best performance of the film just through his eye uh, eye, eye acting you know it's just uh, within you feel this character and uh, the soul coming through um from this from this wonderful actor here and um but yes you know just just the way um that it that it moves me and um as i say you know the, these these moments um you know when when the first couple of deaths occur um and it's just it's just shocked um because it's so sad um you've seen all these characters and they're untouched of course for the first 40 minutes really um you, a subtle hint um someone has died on the island and stuff and you see some bodies um but yes when when this first couple of deaths happen, um, and then of course everything is is upset here, um, and then we have this wonderful moment um, where it seems as if the sun just comes through. You know, it just uh, shines across the blades of grass, and um, it's almost as if the heavens um, open up for these souls. Um, and it's a moment that I just, I was shocked at. You know, I just thought, wow, that is uh, wonderful. Um, the way he done that just the right timing and uh, you know you have a, a bit of just a complete silence there and, and, and just a wonderful moment where uh, it just it just shows this it just shows the grass and uh, the way that the sun 
which comes through and um, you know really really moving moment uh, to sum up uh, the actual value he places Malik um, on these people's lives and um, the way of course they become just part of, of the environment uh, as they die as well it's just it's so many feelings from moments like this throughout the film um, you know it's, it's many if they've not seen the film would think it's just you know kind of a you know a, a war film you know it's epic war film and stuff but it really is it's it's uh, it's got so many moments where it's just uh, purely spiritual and peaceful um, and contemplative um, you have you have um, the the kind of um, the flashbacks as well um, with a lot of the characters. It brings so much uh, weight to to many of these characters actually, and uh, it's a big, big ensemble. Um, and no one in the film is a star; um, they are characters, and um, you know, so many great actors. Um, but it's, it's the way that Malik um, you just makes them part, you know, authentically of of this story um, that he's trying to tell, and um, he right. And, he writes and directs this film, and it's just a beautiful film in every regard. Um, the way, just through the dialogue, um, it's so, so moving, particularly the scenes with Sean Penn, Jim, Jim Caviezel, um, you know, and it's just, it's something that brings tears to my eyes, and um, the way, of course, that so many of these people, when they die, you know, you really, really feel this, um, and, you know, Nick Nolte, of course, is the only character, really, who is a full-on villain, you could say, in many regards. Yes, he's given humanity, but he really um, he pushes these people, and he doesn't care a lot of the time. And it's really, um, you know, of course, it adds so much drama to the film, and um, you know, at times, humour, um, you know, because it's so all out, you know, kind of uh, just it's just insane, um, you know, very very um, kind of big performance, of course. Um, but he is great in the film, and um, yes, yeah, just him sending them out and, and keeping them going, even when um, you know the bit that always gets me. It's when he says, um, you know, there's no time for water um, and for the men to keep going. And uh, John Cusack, of course, is just kind of shocked. Um, he even says that, you know, because he doesn't even care that the, if the men get water or not. He says they're hard enough. Um, there's a moment like this that just shows the brutality, um, you know, of potentially of war and uh, just the way that, the, you know, the people higher up, of course, um, you know, the, the kind of lack of many things there regarding um, the actual men. And, uh, you know, but then you've got the, the humanity of, of many of the commanding officers um, for the film, um, other than Nick Nolte, of course, who just show so much uh, warmth to the characters. And in essence, you know, a lot of the characters, um, you know, kind of they feel it feels like a family. Um, emphasised a lot in the film, actually, um, within the unit, within the patrol, um, kind of thing. And um, you know, it's it just uh, means so much more when when some of these characters die throughout the film, actually, and um, it really perfectly portrays this and uh, the loss uh, of lives and um, just the the wonderful ways in which it portrays nature in the film uh, truly truly beautiful um, beautiful stuff uh, from Malik and just the way um, that it kind of um, is not too much uh, concerned um, with the actual specifics um, you know of this mission um, you could say and it really is um, certainly an anti-war film um, you know and uh, so many so many films are, of course. Um, you know there is a there is a quote by uh, Chimino actually who who says every great um, war film should automatically be in many ways an anti-war film um, because why would you why would you not be? Um, and it's really uh, something to note here that this is more about you know kind of uh, you know, the, the line for example what is this war in the heart of nature and um, as well it's really about these these characters um, finding finding their existence really and uh, it's, it's about the nature's connection. Of spirituality and um, you know that's kind of uh, wonderfully shown in the first 10 minutes um, on the island but then we have it um, you know bigger scale here you know all of these uh, you know these characters and of course uh, as well the, the kind of uh, criticisms throughout the film uh, evident in you know Nick Nolte's character um, you know it really kind of makes him you know a laughable character um, once again realizing this I, when I saw this and uh, you know it really um, because he's the one that is you know constantly on about you know, um, getting promotions and uh, doing it, you know, doing this um, and just going in and risking your life in this way, the lack of actual care, um, but, you know, trying to trying to give them false um, kind of hope in a way or just, you know, you'll get the medals and stuff. And um, then, you know, it really comes clear at the end, uh, Sean Penn's character, when he, you know, takes over, um, you know, really, really wonderfully takes over the narration, you could say, um, from Jim Caviezel, uh, his character, and uh, it really becomes clear George Clooney comes into the film, he's doing the same talk, um, you know, the kind of, you could say the lies um, to the men, and uh, then we have it, you know, it's it's, um, it's showing um, how kind of, um, how war is so just, 
you know, in so many ways, it's just, it's just, what is war, you know, kind of thing, and um, it's just, it's a wonderful way, um, a sincere way that Malik does this, and uh, it's just showing the tragedy of this, um, and just how, how, how wrong it is, you know, in the way that it comes about, and uh, just all these people that die throughout the film. Um, very interestingly, the, the way that Malik cuts to nature, um, actually, or, you know, soon soon after or just before death um, is really something uh, truly moving and actually very, very interesting. Um, you know, when, when explosions are going on and stuff, he, he will cut to a tree um, or, or a little, you know, there's a little bird at one moment that's, that's just been, you know, uh, that's dying basically in front of us. Um, and it's just, it's, it's making all of this one, um, you know, and it's just showing that there's a universe within every man as well, kind of. It's just all these links, all these... Um, connections and um, it just makes for one of the most overall complete and spiritual experiences um, this is just such an experience like all these all these Malik films um, I'll definitely say the first five Malik films um, despite me not you know uh, on my first watch um, I'm going to rewatch it hopefully very soon but The New World um, you know it's, it's not a film that I responded to in quite you know the way that the other four you know of his first fives I did um, but, but I certainly did uh, did like that um, but yes you know this is this is something that is still in that film so um, you know kind of present um, and and just um, you know just the fact that all of these films um, are just so 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 um, you know big and grand and uh, they're always kind of uh, trying to reach uh, for something and uh, just how spiritual um, you know these films are the tree of life um, days of heaven it's just it's really something else and um, you know it's something that I, I'm just I'm always, um, you know, just invested in um, in this film. It is the way that he makes these links and the way he explores, he explores humanity. He does, of course, uh, explore war, um, but but it's really um, it reaches such heights spiritually, and um, it, it's something that truly, um, you know, by the end of the picture, um, I've just experienced uh, something truly profound. And um, you know, all of these films that I say these five ones are experiences. Um, they're not like other films, um, you know, Bad Hands, of course, is the one that's um, more conventional, um, you could say. It's not, you know, kind of full-on Malik in many regards with his visual style or his um, his approach to narration or, you know, all these things. Um, but Bad Hands is my second favourite, so I'm not saying it's uh, not on their level or anything. It's just very, very different, of course. It's Days of Heaven that really marks the change in the way he approaches his films. Um, but The Thin Red Lion, once again, after this gap, he, he, you know, he really did um, start making films, again, very, very differently um, to what he'd done before. And uh, always I appreciate, you know, kind of what, that he is making films the way he wants to make them. Um, he's never playing into anything in, in many regards, although the, the last couple have, you know, been a bit more in the vein of that. Um, you know, I just don't quite, I don't quite get them films at times. Um, but, but, you know, I do, I do fully appreciate the fact that he's, he's, you know, he's doing his own thing as an artist and uh, just... You know, just um, you know, experimenting, but, but kind of just just going ahead with what he believes in, um, which is really, really uh, pleasing um, in many regards. And this film, you know, he he really just he made a film um, that I've I've never seen anything like uh, once again. And uh, just the way he is in control of the camera, um, for example, as well um, as I've said in my previous review. But I'll say again, this is one of the best shot films of all time. Um, I cannot believe. How, how wonderful this looks um, and it's natural um, very very natural here it's pure it's uh, beautiful but you know for example the kind of evenings in the film the way you know you can't quite make up some of the picture at times um, in the distance and everything it's just so natural and um, the way that he captures just um, the light in the films coming through the trees um, you know just just truly wonderful um, beautiful film and uh, this is something that I would this is the type of you know film where I, I would just, you know, I, I look to and, and see so much um, that I would also kind of um, shoot in the way he does this. It's, it's like a, a dream kind of film in the way it's shot. Um, so many of his films are, and uh, it's, just, you know, it's the perfect blend, um, you know, poetry and kind of um, just, you know, capturing wonderful performances as well. Um, this is not a film, you know, like maybe To the Wonder or something where I think he veers off a little bit, maybe, um, in relation to... The characters, um, you know, and, and actually telling his story, um, you know, that's a bit more, you know, they're different than ones, um, but but this one is is definitely a, a, a narrative that is fully fully satisfying, and um, you know, it doesn't answer all the questions, um, but the way it explores them, 
and then leaves little bits for us to pick up on. Um, it, it makes for a complete experience and one you know that stays with you um, in many regards. And I just absolutely adore this film. Um, it really means so much to me. And um, you know, as I say, everything in this film is just flawless for me. Um, you know, Miranda Otto, um, Otto is just wonderful in the film. Uh, it's kind of as well. I just got moved so much by this kind of you know this this romance that kind of is through the um you know in the mind of that character and his his love Miranda Otto um and how you know you know how how things turn out there you know the way she 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 leaves him for another person you know of a man and uh, that's always really really sad at the moment and Ben Chaplin um you know as Private Bell um is just a standout performance uh, in this film and uh, this whole thing with his romance is his love and uh, you know the way of course in the end um, that he does he does lose um, his love you know it's it's truly truly moving um, but I love how it uses it uses this at times um, it shows this in his mind um, you know just to, it's a way for him to get through you know the war um, thinking about something that is pure and um, you know that's a thing that can you know can crop up in a lot of war films at times um, but it's not quite done in this way um, particular way it's very very unique and. Uh, so so wonderful um i love this it's always used um at the right moment uh these these flashbacks if you will um get in the mind of this character and uh, it's such a purity to this um miranda otto not really saying too much in the film um you know in these scenes and stuff and she, you know she there's a bit of uh, narration stuff from her but it's really really wonderful and uh, uplifting actually um in the face of despair you know it's just something that he can get through um used to get through of course uh, the war and uh, just his whole, his whole character, of course, throughout the film, his arc, and um, just the way that you see this, um, these moments where it does, um, it does show this, this love, um, and then you know the tragedy of it ending. Of course, it's something that I just uh, am moved by. Um, to sum up, it really is something wonderful. And um, you know, this film, um, it really, really, um, in such moving ways and uh, honest, uh, you know, visceral ways, it shows the dehumanizing effects of war. Um, you know, many of the characters, John Savage, um, for example, um, just once again reminded how great he is in the film and uh, the way it causes him to go, you know, kind of so, um, you know, become so unhinged hinged, um, in the film and um, just what war can do to people, um, the nature of war and how it affects people. It really gets into this, um, you know, it's not just, it's, it's such a complete film, as I say, but um, yes, it's really, really you know, kind of shocking, of course, um, and it should be, you know, it should be shocking, um, and, uh, cause war is, you know, it's something that, yes, as I say, you know, it's something that, um, is, is, is kind of really honestly portrayed here and on all the, in, in such a, a way that kind of just, you know, it, it's, it's just really getting into the kind of, um, the heart of war and what it can do and how, you know, how unnecessary it is and, uh, just, you know, uh, the kind of, um, the way it does show the kind of the effects it has on many of the characters in the film, uh, it really shakes me. It really does, um, and it's so so visceral and immersive. Um, you know, Malik once again just uh, really uh, you know doing something to the senses. Um, the sound design throughout the film, the way you hear everything, you feel everything in the film, and uh, that just allows me to even further get into the minds of the characters um, individually, and um, you know as a collective force and um, you know all these things going on throughout the film this epic war film this poem um, this really such a human film and um, you know it's these moments of purity as well as I say with this romance and stuff um, that never actually you see on screen as such um, when they're together obviously um, but it's just it's moments like this um, that really uh, elevate the film as well and the action scenes themselves um, truly are mind-blowing this is the next level, um, it really is uh, some of the best, uh, you know, war scenes in terms of the action, the way, you know, it just, um, the tracking shots, of course, um, but, you know, these these moments when you see these characters fly, you know, into the camera almost, uh, fly into each other, um, it really is, it's just, it's something to behold, um, the way this is put together, uh, choreographed. This, this scene, of course, uh, the, the really so authentic and realistic sequence um, when they are trying to take the hill, and um, you know you see them you know, the bit of course when they eventually throw the grenades and everything in into the into the trench and it's just um, it's something that's so immersive in this sense and so so shocking and uh, you know just on edge you know it just feels it's like he, you know he's really breaking the, the line um, to, to kind of um, 
you know, really make this as if it's actually happening. Um, as I probably said in my previous review, it really feels um, like you're you're really at least that some of you is in that, you know, kind of experience um, and he's, he's just created such an authentic experience um, within the action itself. Um, the way, you know, you see the, the points of his shots um, as well um, and just the way that these, you know, um, the, the Japanese, of course, um, when they come over the hill and stuff, um, you know, they charge and uh, you see, see them from different, uh, you know, directions coming through and it's, it's so tense um, from the point of view, of course, um, of the other characters and uh, just just the use of slow motion in the film um the very few moments actually um in in the action is slow motion um but it's always used perfectly and it just as i say um some of the greatest uh you know war scenes of all time and the action is just um mind-blowing it uh, it's something to behold as i say not a single moment where it falters um and it's just it's a level of tension within this it's just staggering um but he makes it so poetic as well at the same time and um you know just um he, he makes this you know this all out kind of brutality um as well at the same time poetic and uh it's just a, something to really really be um in awe of and uh, just as i say the, the the lens choice as well the wides you know and everything and you know it never loses sight of the characters and how this affects them um you know it never stays too far from you know, a character's reaction to, to a death as well, as I say, and um, yes, just the action throughout the film is stunning. It's got everything in this film, um, and it, it's such a, a film that, to take so much from, um, a one that is just pure cinematic perfection. Um, the way it's directed is flawless. Um, the script is just wonderful. Um, all the conversations in the film, the narration um, is beautiful. It really is wonderful. It's, it, reaches a level of uh, spirituality that, that I've rarely seen in the film and um, just, you know, the combination of, of showing this brutality but also, um, you know, suggesting it and uh, the way he cuts Malik in the film, I think it's just really um, mind-blowing, it really is, and uh, just just genius, it, it, it is so genius, this film, uh, in the way it combines nature, um, the cutting to that and um, the actual bits you do see, some stuff, of course, is graphic, um, but, but it's more um, the suggested... Um, you know, the cuts and the, the way it implies violence as well and uh, what what every single uh, moment of violence actually makes you feel. You know, there's many, many films where, you know, and not all films have to be like this, but they do, you know, they're not necessarily like this. Um, they are more, you know, stylistic and stuff in their violence and everything. But this is, in particular occasion, it's kind of, um, it really is making every single moment of violence or, you know, a death and everything so meaningful. And, uh, you know, it makes you, after the film, value life um, even more so and it's just you know this is just um, one of the most wonderful war films I've ever seen and it definitely gets a, a you know a kind of uh, I believe I gave the um, yes the, in the last review I gave it 100% plus tier 3 and it certainly has moved up to 100% plus tier 2 um, this is just a life changing film um, you know so that is definitely well into my top 200 um, any film that gets this uh, even the tier threes are stunning, stunning films, but you know, tier twos as well is just just that bit extra special um, for me, and it's just a sublime film um, that I think is flawlessly acted. Sean Penn, once again, I am just in awe of this guy. Um, he really just has such uh, a presence, and uh, he, he just uh, just such a great character of Welsh, um, you know, and uh, the kind of um, the way he. He looks out for wit uh, in the film, and uh, their 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 uh, you know relationship in the film is is really so warm and kind of heartfelt. And uh, there's so many moments in the film where, you know, the, the officers and everything they're kind of looking out for their men. Um, but then you've got that clash, that conflict uh, as well with with Nick Nolte, and some of them characters, and it just shows, um, you know, kind of the clash, you know, clash of ideals, and uh, you know, it shows the humanity of many people, um, but also how. You know, um, at times the horrible nature of war, of course, and just uh, as well how, you know, the, the question of where where did evil come from? Where did this evil come from? That's always a moment that gets me um, in the narration. And um, it just really um, uh, just affects me so much, actually. Uh, it really makes me question things. And the way it shows this, you know, as I say, the way that the narration relates to what is being shown on the screen, uh, sometimes uh, juxtaposition, very, very... Um, you know precisely um other times kind of kind of just showing um you know what it's what it's saying um but it's always doing something uh that is making you think and feel 
you know, um, it's just it's beautiful uh, this film and uh, it's truly spiritual one um, that is you know of course so masterfully shot um, edited you know the edited in this film the fades um, are absolutely sublime um, you have just a wonderful trance like effect at times and the way it shows the progression uh, you know their travels uh, through the, through the jungles the way this is just so daring for, for Manic to shoot uh, in this way on location um, very very difficult at times it must have been uh, but you know it never feels like this affects the film and um, you know, you've got films like Apocalypse Now where it actually Coppola used uh, the kind of sense of chaos on set you know to actually be part of the experience um, but then the flip side of this is that this film doesn't really let um, what would be you know kind of very difficult uh, production of an, um, affect the film at all um, because it's very very just you know kind of a relaxed um, you know feel to the, to the direction at times weirdly it just feels you know like it, it's just did not bother um, anyone and it just the way the camera gracefully um, flows across the screen and uh, once again I was in awe of the way that you know the battles you know the charges through um, and just the way the camera moves so wonderfully the motivated camera movements are um, truly wonderful the unmotivated camera movements uh, where you know that Malik is trying to to make another connection um, to something uh, deeper and uh, you know it's not a film that ever um, you know, becomes pretentious or anything like this it's just it really is a perfect film for me, and um, I just think it's one of my all-time favourites. Um, not quite in my top 100, but it's um, you know it's some work. And yes, you know I think I think the Thin Red Line is no doubt one of the best war films ever made. It's a very very different war film. Um, as I say, it's more as well about nature and just just uh, human you know humans and uh, how there is a conflict, internal conflict, and um, the way that. It, the clash and the you know inevitable coexistence um, you know of nature, war and um, you know that it's it's just it really is such a tragedy as well um, just in itself just you could be seen as a poetic tragedy um, a poem that really is um, really really so haunting um, the soundtrack of course the score Hans Zimmer um, I I really think this is just um, one of the very very best maybe fifty best in cinema actually uh, scores of all time. Um, a journey to the lion, one of the grandest, most mind-blowing moments in cinema. Better than the, you know, the kind of I think actually, you know, because the Inception, of course, is uh, very similar to this. It's kind of people do that make the connection there, the kind of uh, the time theme there. Um, I think this is, you know, for all the different ones variations in Hans Zimmer's scores, Twelve Years a Slave as well. I think this is the best one and uh, the one that just, uh, you know, really, really. Um, is the most pure in, in its feeling and uh, the whole the whole use of music throughout the film uh, just brings me to tears and uh, as well just makes this uh, so much more of an emotional experience throughout and uh, it always is used at a perfect moment um, to convey the mood subtle moments as well just uh, the village music as well in the theme at the beginning and uh, the way that it cuts back um, to these moments as well to really uh, say powerful things. Um, this is an absolute masterpiece and um, it's just a mind-blowing film um, in every regard. Um, just a masterpiece, as I've said. Jim Caviezel, you know, Sean Penn, um, even John C. Riley, and all these, you know, big, big actors, of course. Adrian Brody um, not getting the role he wanted, um, that he was told, but I think the way that Malik, you know, edited this is key. He really made his own film uh, again, you could say in many regards, he, he made made one when shooting, and then this is completely different, you know, to, to what um, you know. I mean, many were expecting possibly, but it's uh, I think it's just the best uh, that it could have been. I think Malik was in full control, and uh, once again, showing he is a genius uh, when it when it is best. And uh, yes, the heart of this film, the passion, um, the the um, just rest, you know, rest here, at ease that I know I'm in the hands of a filmmaker who cares um, about humanity and just values everyone's lives in, in many regards and, and nature as well and um, you know seeing the the uh, the tragedy of war everything you know it encompasses everything um, that you could expect from a war film really and uh, it's one of the very very best um, you know not top five quite for me but but certainly one of the very best war films um, ever made and yes tell me your thoughts in the comments um, I hope this was a yes it not necessarily need to be a, a, a a completely new review um, or the things I've not said in my other one but it's just another um, view um, once again uh, on a film that's grown on me even more and uh, of course I had to adjust the rating so it's just 
Uh, it's a film I've loved uh, re-watching, of course, and uh, it'd be great to hear the comments. And um, yes, yeah, just a film that means even more to me now. Um, so yes, thanks for watching my review.